Mr. Chips, what are you doing? Internet! What's up, Internet? What's going on? Happy Monday! Happy Monday! It's your Monday. It's my Monday. It's everybody's Monday, unless it's not, because you might be in the other side of the planet. Right? You might be living on the other side of the planet where it's Tuesday, and it's not Monday, but here, in the past, living in the past, here, it's still Monday. Ha 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 Why? I don't know. I didn't invent it. I didn't invent Monday or Tuesday, but... Happy Monday or Tuesday to everyone out there. I hope everybody had a glorious, fantastic, fantabulous weekend. Hopefully you did. I hope you did. I mean, I really do. I really hope you had a fantastic weekend. I did. It went swimmingly. It went well. It came and it went. It was the weekend, uh, but hopefully everybody out there had a fantastic time and a fantastic weekend. Let's give a shout out to whoever's in the chat today. Let's say what's up before we get too many people in here, because I know you all shared it out today, right? Did you share it out? Did you share it out? I don't know if you did or didn't. I'm hoping you did. I hope you shared the show out and then people know it's a happening and they want to show up and they want to ask some questions and stuff. And chat and say hello and all those things. Just like Frank Dominguez making it first to the chat. Glorious. <laughs> As always. Defeating all of his defeating all of his foes who try to who try to get there before he can. Before he does. Which is rare that someone else does. Frank Dominguez, once again, first to the chat, quickly followed by Steve Shrimp Shrimpery, Shrimp Shrimpery, and more. Coming in. A close second, flipping the table. <laughs> That's why I was mentioning that. It's pretty rare anybody beats Frank to the chat so quickly. And, uh, you know, my moderators are actually wondering, like, what is it? How does he do it? I can't tell you. I don't know. I wish I knew. Uh, honestly, being the kind of person that I am, I actually realistically just want to know how he does it, but I don't. And, you know, so my my inquiring, inquisitive mind wants to know how he does it, but it may just uh, maintain a mystery forever. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to go. We shall see. Uh, but Phil Emerson's here. Bald and Dangerous is here. Daryl Dimer, what's up, my man? Good to see you. Uh, Maxwell Sonneman, good to see you. Thanks for coming out. Uh, let's look through here. Rocky's Rocky, what up? Good to see you. Uh, Leone Ballantyne, good to see you. Thanks for coming out today. Uh, oh, there's me uh, in the chat. Okay, yeah. Well, hello to me. <laughs> All glass in the sink is here. Alyssa Bentley, what's up? Um, everybody saying good morning and all that. Good to see you. Thanks, thanks everybody. Let's see. Rechab Harris is here. M Howie Nine, what's up? Good to see you. The Zombie Drummer. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes. What up, Zombie Drummer? Uh, he was going big time on the super chats last week, which is making me go ha ha zombie drummer yes <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i 
I do not know, you guys. How would I know what I'm doing over here? I, I don't know. Who said who Aqua's here? BC Fish Room. Good to see you. Who was saying, uh, just recognized that we are feeding our tanks, not the fish. So a filter that carried half the bile load in an established tank will take a while to grow up a population of bacteria. Very good. Seems a little off topic. But yes, great statement. <laughs> I know. It's, uh, it feels like I came in like ha like in the middle of that conversation. Um, but I don't see the rest. So... Oh, there it is. Gaddis Aquatic was asking. Vexing Cat. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Vexing Cat was asking, anyone have any idea how long to run a sponge filter on an established tank so you can use them in another tank to start it? Not a big sponge filter user. Um, sponge filters are pretty similar to other filtration. It's going to take a while for the bacteria to catch up or um, survive, but... We'll definitely be talking about that today with the, the water testing topic that, that is here. Um, we don't have a video segment today. The reason for that is I actually have the stuff in in my uh, studio here. So I'll be able to um, uh, just literally just hold stuff up. And we'll actually just talk about, um, you know, water testing. And uh, we'll actually, I'm sure, talking about the bacteria and stuff like that. But... Uh, a basic rule to follow if you are taking an established filter, moving it over to another aquarium, I generally wait about uh, 72 hours before I really, you know, add fish or anything like that, um, which is typically pretty much not that big of a deal for me because uh, uh, I'll have those fish like in a quarantine or something, a quarantine tank or something like that in the meantime. So, um, but I'll normally give it a week, you know, if, uh, if need be, like, Let's say I set up a new tank and uh, added some in. I've gone as short as 12 hours is the shortest I've ever gone, um, I think. maybe. Well, hold on. Let me think here for a second. Maybe they were shorter in an emergency, but, um, you know, it, it, in reality sense, if you take biomedia from... You know, and typically a sponge filter is really carrying a lot of ba bacteria on it. But if you take that biomedia and move it over to a new tank, it's essentially like that fast because the bacteria shouldn't have died and you should have at least a clean water environment for that current bacteria to keep feeding. So um, it should be, essentially it should be immediate, but I normally give it some time. I normally, like I said, I normally give it like three days, 72 hours, something like that. Um, to just kind of make sure that it's established and, you know, maybe, maybe just the, the water differences are enough to kind of like, whoa, kill back the, uh, replication of the bacteria and stuff like that. But it is, um, it is supposed to be doubling every 24 hours, essentially, um, uh, is how long the cycle for it is supposed to take. As long as there's enough oxygen and stuff present in the water, it's supposed to be doubling every 24 hours up until, you know, essentially it hits a point where it's like, there's nothing, there's nothing left to consume. And then it'll kind of, you know, drop back down and then go back up, just depending on the environment, uh, the water environment and uh, what's available for it to consume and stuff. So, gosh, hopefully I answered that question and it made sense. <laughs> it, I may have just rambled on and made no sense whatsoever. If that's the case, go ahead and let me know, and I'll try to uh, I'll try to start over uh, explaining that again. But Roger Martinez is here. Good to see a cage Sorensen vexing cat. Like I said, um, Gaddis Aquatics is here. Savannah the Aqualama making it out. Bald and dangerous. If I didn't say hi, Dougie. Well, hello, Sarah Canopko. Good to see you. Uh, Master Beta in the house, kicking around here. Dank tanks. Kevin Keener. What is up? How you doing? Good to see you. Um, BC Fish Room didn't mean to th kind of throw you under the bus there. I was just trying to catch up with the, the chat, Mr. Nicholas. Um, sorry. <laughs> uh, let's see. JH Aquatics is here. Hopefully his power is turned back on. JH, I hear you. Hopefully the power's back on where you're at. I know that it was on fire at one point. So hopefully uh, 
uh, word up. And if you guys don't know who JH Aquatics is, he does the Fish Fam News on the YouTube. So if you haven't seen that, um, be sure to go check that out. Bentley Pascal is here. What's up, my man? Good to see you. Dango Bicon. All right. That, that's a wild name. First time I've ever read that out loud, I think. <laughs> Dango. Hopefully I got it right. Good to see you. It's a Monday. What up? Uh, Ken M.A. is here. Good to see you. Uh, good to see you, Ken. Thanks for coming out today. CRS Flowerhorn Aquatics. Greetings from Scotland. Oh, somebody else out there in the rain, but luckily here, the rain stopped for a minute, and we've got a little bit of sunshine today, but uh, it's a fleeting enigma. I'm, I just can't imagine that, it, that it's actually going to be sunny for any prolonged period of time, uh, you know. I doubt it. Uh, Lex Nibbles is here. Dan Squires, what's up, my man? Good to see you. Moderator extraordinaire. Candy Overholes is here. One of our other moderators. So watch out. Mind your P's and Q's or they'll karate chop you into oblivion. That's just how it goes. You know what I'm saying? Um, Andrew L. is here. Saying evening. Evening, Carl. Good to see you. Uh, good to see you. Alexander... <laughs> I don't know. I was on the spot. Sorry. Should have been ready. Um, Mr. B's fishing things. Good to see you. Big Texas tanks. Michelle Moolash. Molash. Hmm. Michelle Molash. I hope I got that right. Penelope Flores is here. Exotic Farm. Good to see you. Nisi of the North. We're always watching. Be like Frank. Lurkers unite. Good to see you. I'm trying to catch up, uh, trying to read through the chat here as fast as I can. Uh, Mick Shelley, hey, I watch you a lot. I just have one question. How do you get rid of green bacteria? I green bacteria, uh, Mick Shelley. Please rephrase the question. I don't know how to answer that. Green bacteria. Um, maybe you're speaking of green algae. Maybe uh, rephrase the question, please. I need your help. Um, Alyssa Bentley says, no video, internet rage. Well, as you guys know, I'm, uh, I'm doing my darndest to get up more short videos, uh, to everybody. And, uh, hopefully you guys, uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying some of those short videos. Um, I'm trying to get more of those out to basically, um... I think basically just to engage with more of the internet, I guess, uh, with just a, a larger posse, if, if you will. Uh, I'm going to keep doing the, the long live stream, but I think one of, the, one of the things with doing the live long stream is that it maybe only caters to a smaller portion uh, of people. Like, you know, it's just there just aren't that many people that... Um, necessarily are, are into the long format stuff, which is fine. Um, as you guys know, most, uh, there are a ton of people here that, um, and to speak of the devil here, we have a, a brand new patronizer during the show. Uh, we have a ton of people here that, that patronize. Um, and if you don't know what Patreon is, it's basically a, uh, a outside source sort of, crowdfunding i guess maybe would be the thing is that um uh the patreon is how we crowdfund doing this long format show um that's really really what it boils down to um uh, and people like ashley taylor uh who just patronized during the show just 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 two minutes ago see how see how fast i am i'm fast i'm fast on it i know i know i know what's happening by the minute. <laughs> um, but uh, the long format stuff, I like doing. I love doing it. I love getting an opportunity to engage with you guys. Um, but let's just say, let's say, uh, let's, let's take a cross section of people. Uh, it basically comes down to like 20% of people like the long format and the other 80% is like, I have four minutes. Okay. I only have four minutes of time and then I'm going to 
do something else or whatever. I, I don't know what they're, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what's happening. Um, but so I've been trying to make long, uh, more of the short format stuff, essentially just so that we can take the, I guess, so we could take the burden off of like, for instance, super chats, right? Um, I love super chats and, um, uh, thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'm never going to like, I'm always going to say thank you for the super chats for sure. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 100%. Um, it realistically, um, but we want to take the burden off of, um, we basically want to take the burden off of, uh, you know, like the super chat people and whatnot. Um, that could be easily crowdsourced by like nobody basically <laughs> you know what i mean it's just like oh people want to watch short stuff so then uh you know so that's basically like i've been trying to make more short uh videos and stuff um uh, and so that's the whole reason for that i've been i've been trying to just engage with more uh of that and then because i do want uh, my to those of you out there that are that are watching right now, it's 160 something, 64 people or something, uh, watching right now. The reason for that is that I feel my long, you know, here's my long term plan with the Patreon. My long term plan with the Patreon is to utilize that to do other projects, right? That I think, you know, would realistically be more specifically beneficial for engaging with a better or not better but like a but engaging like in person right um with more people that that's okay so i just kind of i'm, I'm trying to figure out like how to verbalize that is that eventually the patreon would be used for like outreach stuff right so that i'd be able to like uh travel to california or something and then like and literally go help somebody or whatever right like maybe they're they need help with their plumbing or something like of their tank and you could actually just physically go there and like go help them out so that is the long-term plan for the patreon or whatever so i've been trying to make some uh some more shorter videos for people out there that that uh are, are more interested in in the um the short format stuff <laughs> Noodle Legs Entertainment is here. Look out. Jimmy Jimmy's showing up as Noodle Legs. <laughs> if you don't know who Jimmy is, he is the master of all that is uh glorious in this world. Um uh, he's um He's the better half of the aquarium co-op duo. <laughs> Hold on, guys. I got to move. My foot's falling asleep. There. Just sit like an adult. Sorry. I'm sitting on my foot. Okay. Um, but let's see. Since I've, I've gone totally off on a sidebar here, it's a total side tangent. Let's get back to fish tank stuff. All right. Uh, McShelley is, has clarified here. It's an algae that is dark forest green, and it's the type that the fish don't eat. Um, hmm. So, your question is to get rid of algae or, or cyanobacteria. Um, I, you know, I really, really, really want to answer this question for you, but I... I really don't know how I, I'm kind of at a loss for, you know, what, what the explanation is of, of what you're asking. So, um, it's either you're asking about green algae and if you're going to be getting rid of trying to get rid of like the green algae that shows up on your glass, if, if that's the question, um, normally that comes from direct light landing on, a landing on a surface uh whether it be you know like a hard surface like your glass or your acrylic of your aquarium or um driftwood or something like that 
um, I would either reposition your lights a little bit, lower the, the light time, or uh, elbow grease to get that off and do a little bit additional water change and test your water and find out what's going on with it, which is what we're going to be talking about today. Um, that's what we're going to be talking about today is testing your water and stuff to find out what's going on. Um, if you're completely confused still, go ahead and test your water. You can always um, test your water and send it in um, to me. Like the Patreon's a great place to post it up. Uh, if you were to say get your water parameters, you can actually go to the Patreon and look at it like the community page there. <laughs> sorry I just, I just went to the patreon uh to actually to literally talk about going to the patreon and i was gonna say, so the first post that is on the community page uh is from vince grippa who posted up the mr browns he got some mr browns in the mail which is awesome i wish i had some mr browns i don't have any it's my birthday week so i'm gonna go I'm going to go to the, uh, the H Mart and I'm going to buy myself some Mr. Browns for my birthday, you guys. So that's, that's what I'm going to be doing, um, is, uh, to get geared up for my, my, um, what the, what's going on over here? Oh, let me move that, um, uh, to get geared up for my birthday, the big birthday barbecue bash this weekend. Uh, I'm going to go over to the H Mart this afternoon and and uh, get myself get myself some Mr. Browns, but he's actually asking urgent help. Uh, three of the Mr. Browns came in damaged. How do I treat? What size mason, mason jar for quarantine? <laughs> um, but yes, one of the big one of the big advantages to the Patreon is that we are able to post up pictures. Um, people are able to post up their water parameters. Um, And uh, people are able to post up some of the experiments that they're doing, things that are going on with their fish. For instance, if you had a sick fish, you could take some pictures of it. You could send those in and, you know, we could kind of sort out what's going on. Um, you know, like Bentley Pascal posted about how he moved some plants around and, and, and this kind of stuff. So the Patreon is super helpful for that. And I, I fully understand if you're somebody who can't. Um, who can't like bust out on onto the Patreon and like maybe make an account or something like that. There is a cheap, there's the cheapest, super cheap, easy way to get a hold of me, and that is via the email. So if you are watching YouTube right now, you could actually just email me, uh, Joel at darkstararts.com. Somebody will post it in the chat, I'm sure. One of our uh super awesome um one of our super awesome uh moderators will handle that and um you guys could just grab that if you really need it uh let's see the lone aquarist says api uh <laughs> um <coughs> leslie sprawlden is in the chat asking if Corey is here um no i don't think Corey's here he's in china um Though I was talking with him earlier today, and he seems to be doing fantastically. Uh, definitely dig it. Uh, Johnny O'Free says, please fix that painting. Fix it. Oh, my gosh. No, I'm not going to. It's going to be leaving the easel here in a minute. Um, well, after the show here, so an hour and a half from little over an hour and a half from now. It's going to be leaving the easel and uh, the beginning of a new project shall go in. Uh, I like it sideways for now because it reminds me that I have to get it moved out. Because a new piece is going on there. I think starting tonight. Maybe. Yeah, probably tonight. Uh, it'll be going on there. Uh, because tomorrow I've got the real fish talk, which means I got to get up at forever early and get uh, driving into traffic. So I'll probably do that tonight. Um, get that lined out. Uh, boo -doo 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 -doo. Let's see. Oh, we've got a we've got super chats, you guys. We got us some super chats. We got one from Stevel Knievel. 
a five dollar super chat coming in hot saying want to start a 10 gallon shrimp tank plant suggestions please okay uh first off 10 gallon shrimp tank i want you to go ahead and uh it's gonna need to at least be 10 times bigger no i'm just just giving you a hard time. Uh, Ten gallon shrimp tank is a fantastic uh, little shrimp enclosure, uh, and uh, I, th- I think you'll probably do do quite well with a ten gallon. Um, just c- kind of depends on your filtration setup, not necessarily the plants, but I'm just kind of talking off the cuff here about uh, a ten gallon shrimp setup. So uh, uh, your filtration. I would definitely keep up on that for sure. And maybe if you had really, maybe if you had like really bad filtration, right? Or just like none. Let's start to think about some of the plants that would be fantastic for that. It not being very tall, first of all. Uh, You can't have a lot of uh, tall stem plants because they'll just grow right out the top. And you'll be living in a living in a world of pain it just ends up becoming a big pain in the buns uh so i I wouldn't think of any stem plants to necessarily put in there because it's not very tall tank um so we got to start thinking about some short growing plants now uh i wouldn't think necessarily any anubias because uh anubias with uh that short shallow of a tank you're probably going to just end up growing algae on the um on the anubias unless you basically have like no light on it and then that the anubias would be totally fine um if you were going to do a stem plant or something like that i would think about fixing like an aquaponic tray high up on the tank so it can actually they just grow up into the air um which would be emergent plants right uh i would just grow them up like that But my favorite shrimp tank plant, 100%, is any kind of cryptocrine. Uh, Cryptocrine, I'm probably saying it wrong, normally referred to as crypts. Any of them are awesome for a shrimp tank. They're super easy to maintain, first of all. Uh, They're super easy to grow, second of all. And third, you don't need that much light to grow them, but you can have just a little light over the 10-gallon, and they'll grow pretty darn well um and then as you need to trim them out of the tank then uh they're actually not that that difficult to trim because you're just going to trim all the runners and stuff and um it actually turns out to be really easy a really easy plant for a small shrimp tank i would go with any of the crypts maybe balancing might be a little weird but uh any of the crypts You'll generally be fine, and they'll grow in there fantastically, and it'll work out pretty darn well. Um, You know, you wouldn't want to go with anything that's like a really fine-leafed carpeting plant or anything like that because it just becomes too difficult to maintain the shrimp tank um, and the plant at the same time, just in conjunction. So uh, I wouldn't consider it uh, that for a shrimp tank specifically um, unless you're just having a couple of shrimp in there and you want to have the scape just be you know johnny on the spot perfect right and that was the main thing that you were doing um whereas if if the shrimp are the main thing that you're doing you want to stay with some easier plants that you're not going to be carousing around and they're all crazy um and it would be that that's the way that i would go about it if i was you know specifically having a uh, a shrimp tank and that was my plan Uh, I don't understand why this thing is going weird right now. Okay, well, I don't know. Uh, All right. Whoa, hey. We got a big super chat here from the Oddball Aquatics. A $10 super chat. Well, $9.99 coming in. uh, Now we know you have an iPhone. (laughs) (coughs) Saying, I got a hold of the guy that had the ropefish breed, and he still has one alive. Um a neat fact he doesn't do water changes only top off uh so i'm going to focus on the evaporation in my multi-tank setup i uh, ideas hmm well uh it sounds interesting that the guy is only doing top offs but i would double check uh oddball aquatics first thing i would check is what is um 
what is okay i don't want to say he or she they their what is their water parameters and what is your water parameters so um and then what's your tank setup versus their tank setup so if you're going to emulate what they're doing i would make sure that you're emulating it to the fullest if that's what you're really planning to do um i would uh so I would get some some uh, water parameters coming from the tap. I would also get some water parameters from the, their tank and then see um, see what what's gonna happen from there uh, as far as you matching the water parameters if that's really what you're gonna do. Um, you know, doing top offs is fine. If, uh, if that's the route that you want to go, but you want to make sure that you're doing top-offs with fully filtered water, which is similar to uh, Rody, um, you know, maybe it's just RO, maybe it's just deionized, but you would want to make sure that... Um, you'd want to make sure that you're, the water that you're adding in as far as the top-off goes uh, is pure, clean water that doesn't have anything in it. Um, you know, all the salts, the magnesium, the calcium, all that kind of stuff doesn't um, evaporate. That stuff doesn't evaporate like water does. Um, so it will just compound in the aquarium if you're only doing top offs with, um, you know, like tap water. It'll just keep compounding until eventually until you get to a point where... Um, you know, all the dissolved solids in the water might um, might get out of hand. Oddball is saying uh, he doesn't test water. Um, in, in response to this line, Oddball is saying he doesn't test the water. So, okay, well, it could definitely be a problem. Um, eh, hmm. Yeah, I mean, if they're not testing their water and you're trying to emulate what they're doing, it's really going to be a problem because if you can't, uh, if you can't standardize what what is happening uh, on your end and their end, um, I would consider that to be a problem. I would, I really would consider it um, to be a problem. And if they're just doing top offs. Um, they might just be getting lucky. Uh, just remember that does happen sometimes um, that that you just get lucky. Um, and uh, that does happen from time to time uh, when things, uh, you know, when you come down to like, you know, breeding fish or something like that, um, then Sometimes things just get lucky. I know that I accidentally bred autos one time. <laughs> and um, so I, I know that, that that has happened for me, even when I wasn't even trying to do it. It just happened on accident. So uh, I, I've had good accidents. I've had bad accidents. So um, that might be something that, that could be happening. Uh, Janet Keller says... Uh, TDS meters are like $9 on Amazon. Um, yeah, if you go to my Amazon influencer page, whatever it's called now, um, I have a couple of TDS meters in there if you're confused and, and can't, can't find them. I could always send you a link too also. What happened? Oh, <laughs> it scared the crap out of me. <laughs> Anybody want to see what it looked like when I get scared? <laughs> Just run it back a little bit. <laughs> That freaked me out. I everybody's everybody's home today. I was I just totally had forgotten because I was in the middle of the show. Let me find out what is going on with uh, Lisa Jobs. What's going on here? I'm gonna scroll back and find out what's going on. Uh, bum, 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 bum. I'm scrolling back. I'm trying to find out what's going on with Lisa Jobs. Um, let's see here. Oh, wow. Lisa's got a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, okay, here we go. It says, I had a major die-off. All water parameters were great. I even bought a TDS. So they are blaming catapa leaves on the die-off. Now, 29 fish dead. 
Whoa. That is crazy. What's going on with that? Um, hmm. Lisa. Where's comments from Lisa? There's a comment from Lisa. How many catapa leaves did you add? I would understand a pH drop, but not sudden. <coughs> I wonder who's blaming you on that. I can't. Mm. I'm trying to find. Uh, I'm trying to find where that commenting thread started. Where did Lisa start posting in the chat? Uh, bump, 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 bump. Well, I'm not sure what's going on with Lisa, but I'm trying to figure it out, and it doesn't seem to be working all that well. Uh, it's like super spread out through the chat. Well, Lisa, I okay, I don't know. I was trying to address what you had going on. It sounds like you had a big die-off, and somebody's blaming it on catapa leaves if you added some leaves to the water, but um, it's a little bit weird. That's a little bit weird. Let's see. She did a necropsy of one of the fish. No worms, no parasites, no TB. So there's nothing going on there. Um, huh. Crazy. But uh, Grom Bull is asking a question here. Did you use... Do you use regular Clorox bleach with Color Max? I can't seem to find any without it for sanitizing aquarium tools. Um, Grand Bull, go to the dollar store and, buy, and get a gallon of bleach, uh, and not and don't be super concerned about what's in it. Uh, just get regular old bleach. It doesn't need to be Clorox. Clorox is a brand name. It's not bleach. Clorox is a company that makes bleach. Uh, if you need to use bleach, uh, I highly recommend going to the dollar store. And while you're there, um, the toothbrushes that I use for stuff all around my aquariums, whether it's getting stuff out of, um, <clears throat> you know, stuff, getting stuff, uh, out behind nooks and crannies or out of rocks or little algaes in the corner or, you know, stuff out of the roots or whatever. Uh, I go to the dollar store also. That's what I, I, I I'll grab like bleach or, um, you know, towels, um, what's the other thing? It's the Mr. Clean magic erasers and bleach. So those are like the four things that I'll generally get when I go to the dollar store. Uh, the Mr. Clean's magic erasers, toothbrushes, uh, towels, like the cloth towels that are super cheap. They have them there. Um, and bleach is that it is that it is that right yeah so you just want regular old bleach nothing super fancy um i've used fancy stuff <laughs> it's exactly the same it's the same chemical so um yes so if you're just getting bleach don't worry too much about it um lisa jobs please like send me an email or something i'm super confused hmm says, I don't think anybody on the Facebook page replied. <clears throat> Turbofish says, if you do a Facebook, Lisa, the group support page is very good. Um, you know, I, I'm going to be brutally honest with you guys. Uh, I get so many notifications from Facebook uh, that I do try to get back to them when I have time. Um, but honestly, Facebook takes the back burner for me personally. Um, which is why I say like, if, if you really need to ask me a question, put an email together, I'll, I'll read it and I'll, I'll get back to you. So, uh, as some people out there know, it has taken a couple of days to get back. Uh, I did miss an email a while ago and I got back to it like two weeks later. I felt really bad about it, but, uh, sometimes that happens too. Um, not on purpose. It just, I just like, whoops. <clears throat> uh, but that's always a great way to do it. Um, or. If you haven't joined um, the Dark Star Arts, or sorry, Dark Star Aquatics, of course, that's super confusing. Um, I have two pages, uh, two group pages on uh, on Facebook, and one of them is Dark Star Arts, and the other one is Dark Star Aquatics. One of them is a group that you can join, um, and uh, 
that one's probably it, that one's only like about 300 people so if you post something up in there most most everybody has their like notifications turned on and stuff like that so uh if you post something on that then uh you'll normally get it um, and that is not an open group. You have to get approved to add, to come in, basically, kind of situation because, um, you know, that's, uh, that's just how it works. You know what I mean? You got to get approved. <clears throat> uh, Lisa Bentley says, that's super weird. I wonder if he needs to add calcium. Who's that? Uh, ba -ba -ba. Savannah Aqualama says her nitrates are still 100 after a few partial change water partial water changes her tank is basically bare with no live plants feeds flakes etc but he has a nice shrimp tank and no reproduction hmm yeah I find the best way to do shrimp is mostly ignore them but glance in once a day and see how they're behaving yep uh, Wasabi Tsunami says the dollar store is dope. Yes, I love the dollar store. Uh, Turbo Fish, it's weird, so I blacked out and offered the expert guidance, guys. Oh, okay. Yeah, so... Hmm. Yeah, hopefully I can get a better explanation. Okay, here we go. Uh, of Lisa Job's thing, and then uh, hopefully I can answer that as best best I can. Uh, but hopefully that gives you guys a couple of avenues if, if, uh, if, you know, trying to get into the live chat is difficult as we found today, it's hard to track exactly what's going on. Um, but Jan and Keller were saying maybe a big pH swing. It could be a big pH swing. I know that was going on with Dan, um, Dan Squires, which is, I was going to answer one of the moderator questions today, which is Dan Squires. He had a good moderator question and we're going to get to that here in a little bit. Um, but Savannah the Aqualama was saying someone at the GPAS was talking about his neighbor and how she does literally everything wrong. Her shrimp breed like crazy, and on paper he has the perfect shrimp tank and can't get a colony going. <clears throat> well, if you can't get a colony going and you have shrimp and you have things going on, um, something something is stopping them from doing from breeding and stuff because. It, we, you do have to recall that shrimp in the wild are a food source, right? Uh, shrimp are essentially a food source, which is why they breed so prolifically, um, is because they're, they're a food source in the wild and, uh, they should be breeding like crazy. Um, so if they're not, something is wrong and you just haven't found it yet. Um, let's see. At Michael Monker, no spikes. The pH is 7.6. Ammonia is 0. Nitrites, 0. Nitrates, 10. TDS, 98. <coughs> well, yeah, Lisa, that actually just, that water sounds fine. Um, uh, Jackson Kobayark is asking, can someone post Joel's Aquarium Co-op affiliate link? Uh, yes, I'm sure somebody will post that into the chat. I did see it come up earlier. Um, as you guys know, I have a gentleman's wager with the Aqua Pros mic on the uh, the uh, Aquarium Co-op affiliate link. That if you guys use the affiliate link, it just basically sends an email that says uh, that I referred somebody to go there. Uh, I wouldn't normally do very many referral type things. I don't. Mainly the only ones I do are uh, Amazon and the Aquarium Co-op. That's basically it. Uh, just because they're all they're all trustworthy. There are third-party sellers on Amazon that sometimes are suspect, but they're backing it up. Amazon backs it up. Like if something gets screwed up, that's why I'm cool with recommending people to go to Amazon or the Aquarium Co-op because I know Corey going go back up whatever it is that he's doing. So um, that's really... You know, that's really the reason that we have an affiliate link, and it's basically just to, to elbow in the ribs kind of situation, you know. So, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, Laura, uh, Laura with an O, Corvus. Hey, buddy. Well, hey, Laura. Good to see you. Thanks for coming out today. It's a great little Monday, and uh, we're actually going to be busting into the, the, uh, 
basically water parameters questions that people have. They've been coming up already, so we were kind of just answering people's questions. There will be a point where I'll just kind of space out and talk for about 10 minutes and show you guys the test kit that I normally use and all that kind of stuff. But uh, right now I'm just trying to field all these questions. Everybody's had a busy weekend with a lot of stuff going on, which is totally understandable because the weekend tis wild. <laughs> That's right, I got my light around here just in case we need to get spooky. Yeah, you thought you thought Halloween was over. You was wrong. The dogs are outside barking. Um uh, all right. Do, 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 do. There's the affiliate link. Candy overhauls <laughs> Candy overhauls is not Johnny. She's Johnny on the spot. Oh my god, we've got crazy super chats to answer. I got all distracted by the dogs barking, and now I'm running behind on these super chats. All right, let me let me catch up. Let me catch up. Corpse a lot. Ooh, <laughs> oh yeah, I like it. Corpse a lot with a ten dollars super chat saying, "I constantly have tilde forty ppm nitrates, frequent water changes, and still forty parts per million." I feed once a day, and it's low to medium stocked. Only problem is gravel vacking is really tough because of plants. Okay, corpse a lot. I'm going to tell you something. Nine times out of ten, when this happens, this line of questioning right here happens. Have you tested your tap water? You got to test your tap water, my peeps. But I'll be brutally honest with you. If I was getting 40 parts per million out of my tap, I would, I personally would be cool with that only because I have planted aquariums, but then I'd be super pissed about it because I have a reef. <laughs> <laughs> to be brutally honest with you, filtering reef water is way more expensive than amending my water with some fertilizer, which as you guys know, uh, if you've been following the channel, hey, um, I use Easy Green from Aquarium Co-op. That's the amendment fertilizer that I use, and we'll actually talk about how um, how I figure that out, what's going on. But I would like 40 parts per million for my planted aquariums. If, if I was getting 40 parts per million uh, ammonia out of my tap water, um, I would uh, I'd probably get rid of my reef and just add another planted aquarium. That's probably what I would do. Um, it's f like... For sure. That's what I would do. But, um, you know, I, I don't have that here. My water here is pretty much just kind of devoid of anything, really. Um, initially, when I moved here, I thought there was something weird going on. But there's just... D the water here, it, it's not roady, but it's like... It's not far off. It's just clean for whatever reason. I, I don't... Uh, it's good. And I'm not going to say for whatever reason. I know the reason. It's just way too long to explain. Um, uh, but Jan and Keller would say, I'd be going through lots of DI resin at 40, 40 parts. Per <laughs> yeah, I'd be I'd be hammering, buying tons of those all the time. Um, I'd be buying DI resin all the time. It would be crazy. Uh, Steve Shrimp and Rick Templin. Okay, so Steve Shrimp posted uh, the the shirts. As uh, as you guys know, the shirts and stickers are live at the store, and the reason I bring those up isn't because um, uh, it's any kind of vanity or anything like that. Is that I was really hoping that the uh, the shrimps and stickers would um, would fund putting this up as a podcast. So I don't know. Hopefully, we can get there. Uh, we're falling short right now, but um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I sort of made up my mind that if I could, if we could sell enough shirts to pay for hosting the um, the podcast, then then I'd I'd put it up as a podcast. But right now, I'm just kind of waiting. I'm kind of waiting to see if that will work out or not, or if I got to figure something else out. Um, famous Aquarius asking, "Hey Joel, what's up? What's what's you cooking up for us today? Uh, today I'll be cooking." Not, uh, what am I cooking today? I'm cooking chicken and something else. I don't, this escapes me right now what I'm making for dinner. I have it laid out though. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jackson Kobayark's asking any like spike today. Yeah, just uh, hit the like button, you guys, if you like 
if that's a thing that you want to do, uh, then do it. Uh, but Corpse Lot saying uh, hasn't tested the water, or saying, oh, no, sorry, tested the tap water, so there's nothing weird going on with the tap water. Okay, this will lead me to two more quick points um, in regards to what may or may not be going on. I would check to see what's going on with your, your biological bacteria, like, I would check your filter to make sure that it's like filtering properly. This it sounds like something might not be functioning the way that it's supposed to. Um, so if if your ammonia is that high and you're not feeding that much and it's moderately planted, um, I would um, hmm. I, I would definitely look into maybe there's something going on with the filter. I'm not sure how you're filtering that tank. Um, and how it's, how it's coming along. Um, so I, that, that, that's where I would go. That would be my next thing would be, um, what, what is going on with the filtration, uh, in, in that aquarium and that maybe there's something wrong. Maybe it's not, uh, maybe it's not working properly. Um, that's where I would go next. If you're just hanging at like 40 parts per million that means that like your plants are uptaking anything um and you could just be something something something's going on uh and it sounds like probably something mechanical if you've already tested the water and you're testing your water um so i would i would definitely uh check into that Uh, do, 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 uh, Laura, Laura with an O was asking, do guppies usually itch themselves on plants and things regardless of water quality? Um, well, they do occasionally flash like, but really not very often. Um, it, if you're noticing the same fish flash, like more than twice or three times in like in like a five minute period, just watch one of them and see what one of them is doing. Um, and if they're flashing, like it generally be like multiple times a minute. Uh, like you see like every 20 seconds or something like that. Uh, that is generally almost always. Now this is an exclusive, but if they're flashing, they either have one of two things. It's normally ick. Ick is the first thing I would be like, um, no, <laughs> like that's probably what's going on. Um, so I would definitely, um, uh, check into that kind of pay attention to what's going on. Um, and then the other thing would be, uh, skin flukes might be the other thing, uh, that I would, that I would be checking into to see if, uh, something like that's going on also. Uh, but, but they're both pretty easily, treatable um just a quick google search of you know ickx and forget what medication is for skin flukes off the top of my head uh i i just can't remember but if it's one or the other um they're both pretty easily uh their skin flukes are easily treated so uh if they're doing that then um I would uh, get the get that treated for sure, and and uh, and then move on from there. Uh, but guppies, yes, they they do get hammered with stuff from time to time. <laughs> they're just, uh, I love them, man. They're they're hardcore fish. They breed well. They do fantastically. But I, I swear, just from time to time, like if something goes wrong, they they all get it. You know what I mean? It's just it's they're just one of those fish that is just like. Bam, everybody's got it. We all got a problem. Oh my gosh. You know. So, um, you know, it's just kind of one of those things with guppies. So I, I would look into that and and make sure that they're um just double check their water, make sure that you're you're coming in pretty good. So that's what I would those are the two things that I would be looking into if they are flashing. Uh, but the zombie drummer with a big old gigantic super chat of $25 and 52 cents. I see what you did there. What was that? Uh, that's a palindrome, right? 2552, right? Right? 
<laughs> is asking, I uh, want to add tannins to my 75 gallon and don't have a great place to put almond leaves. Uh, I run an FX6 and an aquaponics tray for filtration. Could I add a ton of tannins to a five gallon bucket and add it that way during a water change? Oh, oh boy, howdy, I can answer this. Oh my God, I can answer this. Ah! You guys, I'm excited. Is it all right that I'm excited about tannins? <laughs> it's probably not because I'm crazy. It's probably because it's Monday and I'm excited for tannins. All right, you guys. Are you are you prepared? Are you prepared? Have you ever made sun tea? Have you ever made sun tea? Uh, this is exactly how you're going to go about making your tannin-rich additive water. Uh, you're going to be doing the same thing that you do when you make yourself some sun, sun tea. Um, the only slight amendment that you're going to have to do is make sure that you, you know, you take like one of those, those big mason jars, uh, not a mason jar, like a big, uh, bu 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 iced tea jar, whatever those are called, right? What are they, like a gallon and a half? Uh, maybe they're just a gallon, but, uh... You take one of those, fill it up, add just a little bit of dechlorinization, whether it be safe or, uh, um, I use safe. What's the other one? Oh my gosh. Dechlorinator, what's it called? Oh, got him a dingleberry. What's wrong with me today? Sounds like somebody's got a case of the Mondays, right? Uh, dechlorinator C cam. Prime. Jeez. <laughs> prime. Okay, maybe I forgot prime. But I always use safe, personally. Uh, but yeah, just get yourself a big old sun tea jar. Uh, fill that up. Maybe a little bit of prime. A little bit of safe. Whichever ones you want to use. Let it dechlor. Pop your... Catapa leaves in there, and I think last time I did it, it was four. Four catapa leaves to the gallon, uh, and then I put it out in the sun. Now, problem is, out here in the old western Washington, rarely does the sun ever come out. It happens to be out right now, but it's only going to probably be out for like a half an hour or something like that. So, um, you can actually do this also just inside, like on a warm windowsill or something like that. It doesn't necessarily have to be outside in the bright sun. Uh, one of the things is I don't I don't recommend doing this with um, uh, I don't recommend doing this with like boiling water. And one of the big issues with that is is that the um, as the water is hot and then cools down, something happens that makes it super nasty um it's super freaky nasty and ugh, bleh, and you'll probably end up adding moldy gross nasty water into there right so now now that you got yourself some of that sun tea water that's like nice and dark 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 tea now you want to take that water and boil that so you actually just put it up on the stove and boil it for uh, well, you take the leaves out, then now you're going to boil it after you've already made it, right? For, I think, like, you only need to boil it for, like, eight minutes or something like that. You're going to boil it like that. Then you're going to put it back into the jar and let that cool down at room temperature. Um, it's just the best way that I figured out how to do it a long time ago. And being a weird, goofy chef, like, it never seemed odd to me to just go ahead and try all the different ways of, of putting it together and seeing how well it would work. Um, that process with those leaves seemed to be the best way of going about it. Um, that seemed to be the best way to go about it for me. It didn't get moldy, it didn't get weird, and it didn't have a weird smell to it uh, or anything like that. So, um, and it just kind of was the most stable way that I found to make it. So I would do it that way. If you're going to go buy it in the bottle, you can buy what's uh it's a black water amendment. Um, I forget who makes it, but the bottle is yellow 
and you can get it at like PetSmart or Petco or whatever. Uh, but that stuff just really didn't work as well as just making it myself. Honestly, it just it was like, what is this? What is this? You know? Uh, so hopefully that helps out. And, you know, you could always rewind this and figure out what the heck I was talking about and listen to it a couple times or write it down or whatever. And um, that was that's the best way to do it. Uh, and my experience. Uh, Jagator1 says, what's up, Corvus? New to the hobby and to your channel. Thanks for all the good info. Well, thanks for coming out. Thanks for coming out and watching the channel and all that kind of stuff. Jeff Allen's just doing some water changes right now. Sweet. Kevin Keener, one of my big homies. Hey, Kevin, you're coming over for barbecue this weekend, right? It's going to be barbecue. I'm excited. I'm doing a whole bunch of stuff. It's, I'm going over the top. It's crazy. Going crazy for my birthday. I don't know why. It just feels like the right thing to do. Um, Uh-oh. I don't want to miss a super chat. I don't want to miss a super chat. Uh, from Laura with an O saying, thank you so much for the advice. Keep up the great work. Well, thank you. Hey, man. It's easy to keep up the great work with all fans like you guys, man. Honestly, um, I don't know what I'm. I don't know. The Oceaneers. That's what we call you guys. That's right. The Oceaneers. I was about to say, like, I'm not sure what we call you guys. Are you guys, are you guys the army? Are you guys the squad? Maybe you guys would be the Oceaneer squad. No, nah, just Oceaneers fa- sounds good right by itself. The Oceaneers. Like Rocketeers, right? I like it. I like it like that. Seems good to me. Yeah. Yeah. You guys don't need to be a squad or an army or a gang or any of that stuff. Just the Oceaneers. Yeah, I like it. Still good. Still good. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Oh, we've got more super chats I got to get to here before we fall behind completely. Uh, Leslie's Fish Room with a four ninety nine super chat, obviously on an iPhone, <laughs> right? Um, saying just a little love for the tip jar. Um, thank you to Joel and the entire Fish Fam uh, for your time and all the helpful advice. Well, thank you very much, Leslie. Totally appreciate it. Um, thank you very much. The tip jar, like I said, you know, the, uh, the tip jar is for making more shows showing up here and being able to do it. Um, as I mentioned on Friday, um, uh, we'll actually be out in Michigan. If, uh, anybody is near Michigan, are you, are you near Michigan? Um, May 4th, 5th and 6th shall be in Michigan, Grand Rapids, Michigan for the American live bearers association so if you are interested in meeting myself mr jimmy legs and mr Corey from the aquarium coop that's your chance that will be your soonest chance if you are near michigan now if you are near the country of germany okay if you are near the country of germany you're going to get an opportunity to run into myself and the Kobe out at the Interzoo convention the days following Michigan. <laughs> so needless to say, I'm going to be um, trying to do some live streams from Michigan and also try to do some streams from Germany. I don't think that that's going to work, but... I don't know. I'm going to find out. I'm going to find out what happens. Although, worst case scenario, we'll have a ton of great videos and stuff like that coming out, you guys. So if you guys have, uh, if you're out in those areas, like let's say you're in Europe and you're like, dude, I was thinking about going to Inner Zoo, but it turns out Kobe and Gerald are going to be there rambling around. Uh, hey, that might be your time to go. Uh, if you're on the East Coast, and maybe you miss uh, the American Live Bearers Association, um, then, and you miss that, right? Let's say you miss that thing. You could always hold out till Jersey, which will be the um, Aquatic Experience 2018, when I don't know when that is, October or something like that. And I'm not worried about October because it's so far away that can't deal with that right now. But the Aquatic Experience is in Jersey, so maybe that's the other thing. 
I got a congrats here from Turbofish saying, that's rad. Congratulations, man. That's epic. Yes, we're going to be there. Um, Noodle Legs is asking, can I come? Yes, sure. You can, bro. Um, of course. Michigan. Bop, uh, bop. Bop, bop. Oh. I missed a super chat here. I got to get to from Jeff Rose Fishkeeping. If you haven't checked out Jeff, Jeff Rose Fishkeeping, I, I love his channel. I just got into it. I'm checking it out. I'm digging it. Um, he says, I just inadvertently drank some tank water via rocket powered siphon. <laughs> oh, I've never done that. Way too many times. I'm sure I've done that. Um, but. I'll never learn my lesson, I'm sure, right? Although, although, then again, I don't really siphon that much anymore. So maybe I did learn my lesson. Now I just use a pump on a big hose. Um, that's the easiest way to do it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing about Vince Grippa's, um, the Mr. Brown's post is making, cracking me up. Um, let's see here. Okay, Jeff Rose says... Anyways, hi, Joel and Fish Fam. Uh, here's a little something for the tip jar. Oh, so it wasn't even a question there. It wasn't even a question. It's just a tip jar action. Well, thank you, Jeff Rose. I definitely appreciate the... Um, I definitely appreciate the tip jar action. Um, thank you, man. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Wasabi Tsunami is asking, Michigan, is that near Georgia? Uh, yeah, it's closer to Georgia than Washington State. So, you know. Oh, my God. Aquarium Coop is awake and alive. He's here. What is going on? The Aquarium Co-op is 7 a.m. in China. Should be sleeping. <laughs> no, 7 a.m. in China, you should be awake. <clears throat> you got to get out there and find the fish. You got to find the fish in China. You know what I'm talking about, right? All right. Um, DMC of the sea with a $2 super chat saying, uh, finally able to catch a show work plus flu equals death. I 100% agree, man. Work plus flu is certainly death. Um, last time I had to do that, I was taking some of that Dayquil, the, the orange, the orange NyQuil seemed to be the only thing that helped me get through the day. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's miserable. I'm sorry to hear you got the flu. Um, that is super, super lame. But glad to hear that you recovered and you made it back. And thanks for the super chat. Uh, Corpse a lot with a two dollar super chat saying thanks for answering my question as best you could. Um, you know, guys, I, I really try to answer the questions as best I can. Um, but you know, sometimes it's ah, sometimes it's a little bit sketchy to try and answer them because maybe I don't have enough information or whatnot. Uh, that's why I always encourage people to try and get. Um, if there's something really weird going on, you could always check into the Patreon or, um, you know, email me or something like that. But like I said earlier, sometimes the emails get sidebarred. Uh, so the Patreon is good because it is just a good way to go about it because there's a community there that is able to answer, um, you know, in lieu of only me answering, right? Um, oftentimes with the Patreon questions, I'm, I'm just kind of letting them pile up until Friday and we answer those on the Friday show. So, uh, but in the meantime, you know, if somebody has some emergency, I try to answer it. Um, let me, whoops, this thing's doing something weird over here. <laughs> yes. Weird. What are you doing? Okay, cool. Um, all right. Did I get all the super chats? I think I did. Okay. We've got all of the super chats. Handled. Now, as the as the title says and the thumbnail says how, why, and when to test your to water to water test your aquarium. Sorry. To water test your aquarium? I don't know. I worded it weird. I don't I don't know why I did that. First off, here is this is the freshwater kit in the thumbnail there. This is the freshwater te master test kit. This is what I rely on. 
Now, I do have other test kits. I do have other test kits that I utilize. But if we are talking about a freshwater aquarium, in my opinion, this is the best kit that you could have to be testing. Now, are there test strips out there that work well? For sure. Are there other companies that make other test kits? For sure. Are there other companies that make test kits that work well? Yep. 100%. Now, I am not affiliated with API. I'm not affiliated with any water testing company. So bear that in mind, right? I don't have any affiliation with any of the testing kits, the test companies, or any of that kind of stuff. But this is the one that I personally use. I, pers I, I went and got this out of my fish room and brought it in here because I wanted to talk about it a little bit because some of this is a little bit confusing to some people. But if you have a planted aquarium, in my opinion, these are all the tests that you need. pH, high range pH, ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, and one other thing would be a TDS meter. These are the main things that you're going to need. This is all you're really going to need um, uh, besides a GH or a KH test kit. Um, but this is all you really need to really just operate a standard planted aquarium that isn't completely crazy. Um, KH and GH are really only going to come into play um, when uh, you're essentially doing high-end shrimp and a couple of other things. Um, otherwise, this is going to be this is going to be plenty for you to figure out what's going on, and then you're going to be able to um, just operate operate your tank, know what's happening, and know. Um, you know, have a good idea of what's going on with your water and make sure that everything's working well. Now, so let's run through. I don't want to, um, I don't want to turn this into a crazy snooze fest. We'll actually start talking about some of the goofy stuff, uh, here in a little bit, but, um, like basically if you're starting out an aquarium, like this is the kit that you need. You just Order this kit. Oh, here it is. Hey, there we go. Just order the freshwater master test kit. And then um, you can worry about GH and KH and stuff like that down the road. And we'll actually talk about those. I don't have those kits right here um, right now. Because like I said, this is the main kit that you're going to need. And that's really all that you're going to need. Uh, but let's just start at the beginning here. Now, pH is going to be important and at certain times you can definitely figure out um from your ph generally what's going on with your kh and your gh if you once you get really in a rhythm of what's going on right um in your in your question in in your tank uh once you start to really start to figure it out um, Leslie's fish room says, so if you're testing your water, how do you know if your tank is cycled or not? Um, there are so many, um, nitrogen cycle, uh, videos out there. Um, but essentially once you have zero nitrates or nitrites, sorry, once you have zero nitrites, your tank is cycled. That's just the really quick way of explaining it. Um, but like I was saying, um, when you start running this test kit and utilizing it a lot when you start out, eventually you start to get a feel for things like your GH, your KH. Um, you know, if the pH is starting to go out of whack on a regular basis, um, <clears throat> when you then you'll start to know, oh, wait a minute, uh, something's probably going on with my GH and my KH. So even though my ammonia is good and I'm not necessarily ready for um, a water change, right? You notice that your pH starts changing a lot and you're like, oh, I need to do a water change because my water is not buffering. Or you're going to either start adding some um, 
you're either going to you're going to start adding some amendments to keep your water uh, from the pH swinging around all crazy. Um, so once you start going into this test kit, so we'll t that's kind of the part with measuring the pH. So the pH on the back here is pretty easy to figure out the scale because you're going all the way from six all the way up to 8.8. .8. Anything outside of six and 8.8, .8, you better already have been keeping fish for a really long time if you're going to be keeping anything that like needs to be at 10. <laughs> you should already have a vast knowledge of how to test for water and what's going on with water. Um, so anybody that's really starting eight is starting eight, eight, starting out, out. Anything in that range is plenty to figure out. Now, when you test your uh, pH and it is somehow up here, then you need to go to the high range. So you got to test the high range right here. Okay, and then if it's landing anywhere over here, then you'll know, okay, it's sitting right there. Now, my water is almost always sitting between 6.8 and 7. It's almost always neutral or 6.8. That's just where my systems are, are. They're buffered out to. They just don't fluctuate that much from there, even though I'm pounding CO2 in. I'm got a ton of light going on in there. Um, and that kind of, that kind of stuff. But so Dan's, so to reference back earlier, one of my moderators was asking a question, uh, because his pH crashed all the way down to, hold on, 4.9, which is crazy low. Okay. But typically, like I was saying that you meant you might not have a GH or a KH test kit, but you would know that overnight your pH went from, let's say, 6.8, boom, down to 5. You would know, wait a minute, my pH is fluctuating like crazy, which means that my um, your general hardness is like gone down to nothing, basically. Um, um, hold on, let me... So I'm verbalizing this and I haven't had any, any, so I'm looking at my notes over here. Sorry, guys. I actually have to double check <laughs> while I yammer on. Um, yeah, good. So general, your GH is missing. <laughs> okay. So um, if your GH is completely missing, that means um, that your pH is going to go all bonkers, basically, um, as things go on. Now, um, no, sorry, did, did I say GH? No, KH. So, oh. Wow, a bunch of people are going to tell me I'm an idiot on the replay here. <laughs> oh, I'm sure Kobe's going to do it too because he's in Germany right now. Um, but, sorry. That means your KH is super low um, and your water doesn't have any buffering capacity, essentially. Um, so if you need to bring up your KH is that you're basically going to be in the baking soda, not baking powder department to try and buffer your water back up and keep the uh, keep the pH from swinging all over the place. Um So if you try to bring your GH up, that's going to be your calcium and magnesium. And as you say, I'm like trying to figure out how to talk about this out loud because I barely, rarely do I vocalize it just talking off the cuff. <laughs> um, but KH is based off of essentially sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda, Um which I'm, um, let me double check here real quick. It's NaHCO3 is basically what, what you're looking for right there. Um, 
and that's what's going to bring your essentially keep your pH from swinging around or whatever. So that's why I was saying that you don't need a GH and a KH kit to test for that because you would know whether or not you're stable or not because if the pH is going all wackadoodle, right, then you know that those are going to be low. Um, RO water that we were talking about earlier, the reverse osmosis deionized water, doesn't have any GH or KH in it at all, right? Um, now, if you were to just take the roadie water and put it into a tank, right, one of the issues that you're going to run into is that any of the CO2 or anything like that in the environment will allow the PA pH to go all bonkers, right? Now, about 12 years ago when I started keeping, 10 years ago, 2007, what was that, 11 years ago, when I started keeping sort of high-end planted tanks, we're going high-tech, we're trying all the stuff. GH and KH buffering was super crazy hard to do. <laughs> it was like a big pain in the butt. Um Whereas now it's super easy because you can actually just buy GH and KH buffer and it's only like eight bucks um, last time I got it. And it just tells you how much to add per gallon, which is so much easier than how it used to be. Um, uh, so that's really one of the benefits to right now. If you are somebody that's like, hmm, I'm trying to figure out the relationship of how this water works and stuff is that. Now you can actually just buy the product like pre-mixed by a bunch of people that actually make it uh, ahead of time. And it just has instructions on it where you're like, oh, I need two tablespoons of this for my whole tank when I do a giant water change, right? So that's one of the definite like upsides where, whereas like now we're in 2018, whereas like 2007, I was saying like 2007 is when I started getting into like crazy planted aquariums when that was really like going down uh, for me personally. And it was chaos back then to try and figure out this kind of stuff. But now it's actually like really easy. Um, GB there says, I wish I didn't have liquid rock well water. Um, I don't know why not. I Liquid rock well water is awesome. Um you can do a ton of stuff with it. Um, you know, if you have that liquid rock water, you could, um, it's pretty easy to do like, you know, catapa leaves, uh, a ton of driftwood and all that kind of stuff. And then just not include any amendments that are going to like, you know, harden out your water and then just do small water changes throughout the week. Um, personally, if I had like liquid rock water, like you, I would, set up an auto water change system and uh that would actually honestly be awesome <laughs> charlie's list said it's monday <laughs> thanks um let's see max max sunniman says uh the other week a local fish store is selling them from under 30 dollars it was a steal yeah i think this master test kit i got was 22 last time i got it on amazon yeah. Yeah, BC Fishroom says the irony of buy, buying a master test kit is you still have to buy the KH and GH test kits to have a master test kit. Well, one of the big issues for that is, is there are so many things that you could be testing for, like copper, magnesium, uh, KH, GH, um... nitrogen that isn't nitrate or nitrite, right? So, yeah, I mean, that's one of the things. If they had all those test kits in there, it just starts getting crazy. Like iron, I mean, there are not many people that are uh, um, testing for iron and stuff. So, okay. Hopefully, I kind of explained something. I just realized I just walked around in a big giant circle and not even really sure what I talked about, but... The slight explanation is, is that you wouldn't necessarily need a GH or a KH kit if you were monitoring your pH, right? Because your pH will tell the story of the GH and KH if they're 
going if your pH is going all over the place, that means that your KH is low. And if your your KH is low, that means you're gonna want to dose GH also because GH is being consumed by your plants. Now, so hopefully I explained that at the beginning here, right? Um, that you wouldn't need the GH and KH if you have a planted aquarium that actually is respirating, which essentially, <coughs> excuse me, which essentially means if you have lights going into it, the plants are growing, and then the lights go off and the plants go dormant for at night. That's the respiration of a planted aquarium. So if it is doing that, it will be using up your GH. Like it just will be getting used up. So um, that's why with the master test kit, if you have the pH and you can actually see what's going on with your pH as you're testing it when it's new. So like for instance, when you're cycling your aquarium, you definitely want to be testing your aquarium every day. And it sounds like crazy talk, but you want to be testing your aquarium every day for the first like two months, basically. Um, because first of all, if you're brand new to the to aquariums, the aquarium hobby or any of that kind of stuff, and you're trying to figure out how your cycle is going, you better figure out how to get really good at testing, how, how you can do it quickly. You don't really have to think about it anymore. Uh, you're in the habit of writing down what the readings are, right? Whatever the readings are, you write them down and then you can really start to figure it out, um, over time of what's going on with your aquarium, how things are changing and what's going on. Uh, just for, just to pause for a second. Uh, Jan and Keller says I dilute my hard water with RO to normalize it. That's a great, that's a great way. I, I would rather have liquid rock. <laughs> I would rather have liquid rock, um, water and filter some of it down than try to go the other way. Honestly, it just, it's just a bit of a headache here. Um, I mean, realistically, I would probably be doing a lot of like dehumidifying and, and, and probably collecting water different ways if I lived around where it was liquid rock so I didn't have to filter everything. But um, that's exactly how I would be doing it. I'd be mixing it down. Um, let's see. RJL says, serious fish keepers have test kits complete with GH and KH and a TDS meter. Yes. Um, but one of the reasons I'm explaining is that everything can be done from this kit. It's the reason why all the other tests aren't, aren't included into this. And, um, that's why they're not there. And to understand the relationship of your water with the aquarium is why they're generally not in there. Um, so like if you were somebody that had just a cichlid tank, right? Um, you wouldn't want to know really your GH, your KH, um, or any of that kind of stuff because you have so much, um, you know, limestone and rock and all that stuff in there that it would be kind of pointless to buy those portions of the test kit. Right. <clears throat> um, and as somebody who's keeping a freshwater planted aquarium, you would definitely want to understand, uh, just to, to begin to understand what the relationship is in your water um, between all of these things, right? And like I said, you want to be testing like every day and get in the habit of doing it right when you start out. Um, and so the reason for that um, is to just start to learn the ecosystem and start to learn what's going on. Eventually, there is a point in time where there's only one thing in this test kit that is really, really essential for anybody to have. And that's just the ammonia. Um, which um, shouldn't be that big of a deal. It should be known by most people once they've gotten a long, long way down the road. But, um, you know, that's really the only thing that people are really going to test for at any point in time. Um, but 
Nowadays, the only thing I really use on mine is actually just a nitrate test. I never even, I never really even test for ammonia anymore unless I see something that may or may not be going. You know, if I see something going on in my tank, like, huh, what the, hmm, what's going on here? Um, I'll bust out the whole kit and use everything. But at this point in time, I basically have my water changes scheduled because I've been, I've was testing the water here as I was doing water changes for quite a while, right? Uh, and living here. And the water, more often than not, if I'm testing the water, I'm testing the water that comes out of the tap, um, to be realistic. Um, uh, to be realistically honest about it, like that's that's really the water I'm testing more often than not is the tap water to see what I'm doing water changes with. Um, because I'm pretty just on a schedule with these aquariums to make sure that they're in the right spot. Um, but as I mentioned earlier in the show, I'm actually using easy green now, which is why I actually test for nitrate now to make sure that I'm at the right nitrate level. Now what I'm shooting for, um, instead of shooting for 40, I'm actually just shooting for, um, 30 parts per million, uh, nitrate to make sure that my, my fertilizer is a little bit higher, um, but lower than the 40, than the 40 parts per million that a lot of people recommend uh, for their fertilizer level. Um, now, my reasoning behind that um, is sort of convoluted. Like, even though people recommend um, 30 parts per million, or sorry, 40 parts per million, I'm shooting for 30 so that I have a little bit of, um, I have a little bit of leeway with my water quality to make sure that things are sort of staying legit uh, as opposed to shooting high and then having something goofy happen, um, you know, like accidentally overfeeding or something like that. And then being like, ah, you know, <laughs> being close, uh, being close to the 60 and 70 parts per million nitrate, which is where I really don't want to be. <laughs> but 30 for me seems to be the real sweet spot, um, with how much, uh, I have CO2, going into my tanks and with how much I'm feeding and everything like that, 30 parts per million is working really well for me and has for a really long time. So, um, uh Oh, groomer girl just showed up. Just, just joined better late than never. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for showing up. Um, ultimate fish keeping show just showed up also just in from work. All right, so what the heck was I talking about? Okay, so why is this test kit important and why do I only test for nitrates now? And that's, but here's the big thing. The only reason that I'm testing for nitrates only now is because my tank, I have, uh, I was testing for a long time, right? My tank is cycled. I haven't experienced any kind of crash or anything like that going on. And there wouldn't necessarily be anything that would warn me about something going on other than just my nitrate being off from the 30, right? That 30 mark and the possibility of some ammonia showing up. The chances of any of that happening before a plant or a fish was going to show me that is kind of not really going to happen, especially out of a 300 gallon system. Um, essentially I'm going to see some kind of plant melt off or a plant burn or something like that going on. Uh, I would notice that before, um, anything else could have been going on. Jan and Keller says had a reef tank set up for about three years, just the expensive salt water, uh, making and changes made me get out of the salt side, but I still have all the equipment. Um, I am almost at the point right now where I want to get rid of my reef. Honestly, I don't know. <sighs> I don't know. I'm th still thinking about it. I'm still thinking about whether I want to get rid of it or not. Uh, GB says my water comes out the tap at 7.6, then jumps to 8.6 to 8.8. .8. TDS is 600 to 800. Yeah, that's tolerable. <laughs> um... I realistically with GB with your water, I would probably, um, water it down with RO and let it sit overnight. That's what I would probably do. 
Groomer Girl says, I'm Canadian, waiting for the snow to melt, so the videos are a great way to pass the time. Oh, cool. Uh, Rory's here asking, anyone ever cycle a tank using a raw prawn shrimp from the store? I read so many different stories. <laughs> yes, I have a matter of fact have done that. Did that with a uh, number 16 frozen prawn. Um, I actually got from a restaurant. I'm not going to tell you what restaurant it was, but I got it from the freezer. Brought it home and threw it in a tank and let it cycle. Uh, don't recommend it. It's kind of stinky and... 50-50. I would definitely give it a 50-50 of whether or not it's a good um, deal or not. But it stinks, so it's definitely going to do that. Uh, right. Cool. Okay. So the next part we, I was planning on talking about is the difference between nitrate and nitrite. Um, nitrite to try to simplify it as much as possible, um, and I'm sure somebody watching this after the fact is uh, going to give me a wicked hard time. Um, the difference between nitrate and nitrite is actually one oxygen molecule. Um, nitrite is actually a sulfide, I believe, right? Isn't, I think... I'm trying to I'm trying to recall out of my brain here, uh, but nitrite is actually a sulfide that is. Um, oh, what am I trying to think here? Hold on, come on, brain, let's go. Is it working? I don't think my brain's working, um, but. Nitrite is a sulfide, and nitrate is... What's the... Jesus. Hold on a minute. <laughs> My brain's not working. I want to double check here before I accidentally uh, talk out, out, my, out my buns too quickly. All right. Yes. They're both sodium, two common preservatives used in food. <laughs> Hold on a second. Um, yeah, so. All right, I'm trying to figure out how to verbalize what I'm trying to talk about here. Um, hmm. I guess I should have written this down ahead of time. Now I feel like, kind of feel like an idiot because my brain is a cluster right now, an hour and a half into talking. Um, but nitrate versus nitrite. So nitrate is easily usable because of its third oxygen molecule, essentially, um, for the plants to be able to uptake it. Nitrite doesn't really have anywhere to go. It's just kind of hanging around. We have to wait for the bacteria to break it down, right? Um, so, you know, utilizing that third oxygen molecule when plants are able to pick up nitrate, okay, allows them for a proper respiration to allow oxygen out during photosynthesis. Now, it's not going to pick up, your plants aren't going to eat up, essentially eat up nitrate during the nighttime because at night they're actually exhaling um, the CO2 and whatnot uh, instead of just straight O2 because what they're pulling from the nitrate is the nitrogen and one of the oxygen molecules and then they'll breathe out um, oxygen. The O2 is what gets respirated out then part of what they're picking up during the day is the carbon they're going to mix that carbon with nitrogen as the forming of the process so what i'm testing for when i test my aquarium is i'm testing for the nitrate itself to make sure that my nitrate level is high enough so that my plants have all of the building blocks that they're able to grab and combine with um with the carbon and the oxygen and whatnot so that the photosynthetic process can actually work. And they'll utilize the energy from the light that they're getting 
and then they're going to respirate at night. So that's why I was trying to say earlier when you're testing and you can test your pH and from based off of the question that I got from Dan right before the show started, um, is that if your pH has dropped significantly overnight, you know that your GH and your KH are low because you'd want to just dose those together at the same time, right? That's why your pH has dropped because the gas off at night is CO2, right? Instead of um, oxygen, right? Which is during the day. Whew. All that CO2 gassing off from your plants is what will drop the pH at night so that your pH is super low in the morning when you come in and you go like, wait a minute, my lights aren't on, my fish are freaking out. You check your pH and it's something super crazy low, like 5.5 or something nutty like that. That's how you would know what is going on. So then with this same kit, right, you'd want to test your nitrates to make sure that your nitrates are high enough that there's enough fertilizer in there that when you dose your KH and GH, that they aren't going to be picked up by all the plants in your aquarium, which is why, so the earlier question with the 10 gallon shrimp tank, which is why you see breeders that breed those shrimp aquariums, right? They almost always just have a sponge filter and some media in there. And that's all that they really have going on because you could have an opportunity where where the, I just, I just read that sentence that popped in. Um, you could have an opportunity where you only have a little bit of GH and KH left in that water and the plants grab that. And then overnight you get this gigantic pH swing and then all your shrimp end up dying. So that's how that water quality issue is interacting with itself. That like if your GH and KH are too low, your plants use that GH and KH because they're going to strip that out of the water. Because like we talked about earlier, that's like calcium, magnesium, um, the bicarbonates and stuff like that that are in your water, right? The plants will uptake that and then your pH becomes completely unstable. So that's why you don't necessarily need the GH and KH test kit in there is because that's the explanation. So, and that should be figured out before you really have a bunch of animals in there because the last thing that you wanna do is just kill off all your critters uh, in your tank because you hadn't tested that stuff ahead of time. Um, but this, this like falls in line with um, like the people that don't quarantine, right? So then they get fish from the store, they bought it, they bring it home, they put it in their tank, and then they're like, like, then a week and a half later, everything's sick. And they're like, well, I don't understand. They were fine when I brought them. It's because you didn't quarantine them. But this is the same issue that I've noticed over the years with people like not getting a master test kit and not using it all the time, right? Especially at the beginning. Is they don't use it very often. And then they don't understand like the correlation of what's going on because they may or may not have learned from somebody online that goes, well, hey, if you just set up an aquarium and you take this old sponge filter and you squeeze it into the water, there you go. Now you got bacteria, right? And it's all good. Ultimately, it's problematic because you're never going to see the other end of the, the end of the story when somebody explains it like that. And I may or may not have screwed up my explanation today. I honestly should have written down some notes here so I'd be able to reference them really quickly. But I was like, yeah, dude, I'll just be able to run through this no problem and not trip over my tongue and lose track of what I was talking about. Um, but hopefully I explained it in some kind of way that actually like helped made sense to people. Um, but... One of the big things that I love about planted aquariums and the ecosystem is that it does that it does do that respiration like I was talking about earlier is that it does do that respiration where it actually you know it's it has this ebb and flow throughout the day where it's going to end up balancing itself out and make and start to really make sense um 
is a lot of it has to do with, you know, as soon as you start this thing up, you definitely do want to be testing it every, you know, every day, um, over time. And then you really start to get into a rhythm. Uh, and like I said, more often than not now is just, I'm just testing for my nitrates to make sure that they're looking correct after a water change, um, or before, before and after a water change. So, um, I run through the nitrate test way faster than I run through anything else. Um, and I end up having extra ones, uh, left over, which is kind of wasteful, but, um, I find it just to be easier to buy the whole master test kit than just to buy individuals. Um, but for a reason to explain why I was mentioning that is that Ryan Brown was asking, uh, how often should you replace your test kit? Now I forget how long it is before these things expire. Um, but, I would say a year is probably long enough to hope that it's still working properly. Um, and the reason that I go for the liquid test kits is in my experience, um, I've had the test strips go bad on me before. Um, like they just stop activating correctly. And then I have to take like a, a special trip to the store or order some like s special right? <laughs> um, <clears throat> whereas I'm like, yeah, I still got test strips. I'm totally cool. And then I go to like do a bunch of water changes and stuff like that. And then it's like, these aren't working. And I'm like in the middle of water changes or doing maintenance or just getting ready to do it. And like, oh man, now I got to go to the store and buy another test kit, which is why I go with the water one, these or the water, the water ones, the liquid ones is because I know when they start, they're starting to run out. Like there just isn't that much left in there. Like, Oh, okay. I better order one for uh, a couple weeks down the road and I'll be just totally ready for it. Um, there are expiration dates as a uh, uh, fishy ocean was saying, but um, I, I really just try not to go past a year on them. Uh, once they've been opened. Um, I think their shelf life is much longer than that if they have not been opened. But once I open them, I'm pretty much not going to let them keep or kick around for more than a year. Um, just out of the fact that like they can get cross contaminated. Um, they can get other things in them. Um, they, you know, as uh, <laughs> RJL saying, you can shank them into shape. So to make sure that they're working right. Uh, Liz Ward is asking, good question. How do you know when the test kits need replacing? Um, I've, I've personally never had the liquid ones ever not work properly. Um, to my knowledge, they may, they may have been not working properly at one point in time. Um, but to my knowledge, I've never had them not work properly. Um, so that's, that's realistically just my take on the test kits necessarily that like, that's why I don't go with the test strips anymore. I used to go with test strips because they were just so much more convenient, but, um, just that convenience like goes away for me completely when I have to make this like hour and a half, two hour trek to go to the store to get another test kit and then come back. And then I'm like, all that time I saved is all just right out the window. So, um, but there is there, there is a way to test the tests to make sure that they're working properly and that's like you have to have like a bunch of tests to test and see if they're working correctly or not um but that obviously um is kind of a that's a lot of time and money sort of uh so most people aren't necessarily going to um do that uh but yes there are ways to test the tests uh but you know, the, the way that I generally would avoid that in my day-to-day -day in, in, incarnation, right, is just to not let them be older than a year. Uh, Michael Monker is asking, any trouble with the API nitrate test kit? People say you have to shake it like crazy to get a good result. Uh, yeah, you got to shake it like crazy. You just, you have to shake them ahead of time and you got to shake them uh, when you're, when you're testing them out. Uh, very you got to shake it. You follow the instructions. You got to shake it, shake it, shake it like a Polaroid picture. You know what I mean? That's an old, that's an old reference. Sorry guys. Wish there was a newer one. Uh, but I, maybe I just not hip enough. I'm not hip enough bros. 
Uh, Aquatacy is here. What's up? Saying uh, the test strips have a short shelf life and can give false readings. Um, yeah, that, that's been my only downside with the test strips is that it has happened. Like I said, that I'm like, I have test strips. And then when I was going to use them, it's like, oh, these aren't working for whatever reason. Probably because they were open. Jesus. Oh, that door is a heart attack. That door opening is a heart attack. It's giving me a heart attack. <laughs> do it. Hi, babe. I'm talking about test kits and stuff. Why? Because it's scary. I'm just, I'm just saying it's scaring me. I'm new to the door opening. It's giving me a heart attack. Uh, boom. All right. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, that was the only downside I've had with the, um, with the test strips. Like I've had them work before and be really convenient, but, um, and it was probably operator error. I bet you I left like the top off or maybe I got something mixed in there, but just for me personally, like, I think, I don't know. It's super easy for me to like screw that up and, uh, and ruin them. So that's why I stick with the liquid kits now and just go with those because, um, like I was saying that, um, uh, previously was, what's the word I'm looking for here? The, all right, so the respiration within the tank that I was talking about before, you get really used to it. Um, you get really used to what's going on with your aquarium. You really start to figure it out. But anyway, that's starting out, like I said, you really want to be testing as much as, not as much as possible. I mean, I'm not saying test every 10 minutes or something crazy like that. But once a day to start figuring out so that you're setting your levels and you know exactly what is going on with that, for instance, with that respiration like I was talking about. Um, and you could... Um, <laughs> just reading the chat i'll get to that in a second uh but as that respiration is going on you can really start to figure out um how much um uh how much what's the word either how much fertilizer you need to add how much fertilizer you need to take away maybe you're adding in oh, i got something on my tooth gross I think that's what was there. Was that there the whole time? Gross. Um, but uh, so then you can start to figure out like where your fertilizer needs to be set at. If you need to um, do more frequent water changes, less frequent water changes, uh, like you don't need to do them or you need to get going up um, into more water changes. That's the stuff that's going to start figuring that out. Um and uh, so you really start to uh, figure that stuff out as you're like getting into it. And then you just start to kind of get into a rhythm with um, with your aquarium. Um, and as things kind of go along, then you really start working your way out of like having to buy kits all the time, all the time all the time but it is one of the initial things i always recommend people to get a bunch of it um get a bunch of it set up and um get a bunch of it set up tested and then you keep testing it right um over time and then you start figuring out uh what's going on with your aquarium and then how you have uh, a working relationship with your aquarium right <clears throat> so I don't know. Hopefully I explained something here, but uh, I do have a couple of Patreon questions to answer. Uh, one from Jamil Muhammad says, finally caught a live stream. Well, thanks, Jamil. Uh, thanks for chipping in. Uh, Roger Martinez wrote into the Patreon saying, do you have any tips on balancing a high tech 20 gallon aqua sky light, heavily planted, easy green, one pump a day and 50% water change a week, 7.4 pH, zero ammonia and nitrate and 20 nitrate. Uh, balancing that tank roger like i said uh i shoot for 30 parts per million nitrate i wouldn't be dosing um i would not be dosing your fertilizer every single day 
Um, I would be dosing it up to 30 parts per million after your water change. And then, um, and then I would, um, from there, from there, I would, um, be monitoring it with the test kit to find out where your nitrates are going. So I, that's one of the, that's one of the best ways that I would do it. So like Roger's tank here is set up. He's already got a system in place of what he's doing, right? Um, and what's happening. So now he can actually set up a testing schedule to, fi to find out. I'm going to bring your nitrates up to 30, then test throughout the week and see where it's landing after a week, right? Um, and if you really start doing that for a couple... Um, you start doing that for a couple of weeks, you're going to get really used to what you're doing, right? And then you're going to basically be able to back off and really only be testing like once a week to make sure that um, you're at where you want to be at uh, as far as your nitrates go, as far as your plant consumption goes, and your um, the pH is actually going to be a, a pretty big helper um, also uh, through there so that you can figure out uh, what's being used up with your GH and KH and stuff and then what you need to uh, dose. And if your water change, for instance, is going to be enough to accommodate that. Um, but yes, to balance that, Roger, that's what I would definitely be going for um, and uh, what I'd be looking for to do. Uh, two quick notes here before we get up to the uh, end of the show. I definitely want to say thanks to everybody. Uh, there's a lot of new subscribers here now. Um, I don't know that I did a great job of actually explaining the water testing today. I feel like I rambled into uh, a bunch of nonsense. I sort of forgot what I was going to talk about. Um, so, you know, my apologies if I screwed it up. <laughs> But uh, definitely want to say thanks to all the new subscribers, uh, all the new patronizers this week, and um, uh, everybody for showing up and stuff. And uh, coming out today, I think our concurrent today most was 192. 192 viewers. Right on. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. Uh, Adam Wing is saying 30 parts per million nitrate. Uh, would that hurt fish and inverts? I've been floating around 10 parts per million. Uh, no. Anything anything basically under 60 parts per million is not that bad. Right? I shoot for 30, right? Half of what I would consider the break point. If you hit 60, it is definitely time to go ahead and just do a water change now. Because just chances are it's going to be doing this throughout the day. Like you might be reaching up, ah, oh, ah, right? Depending on how much light and uptake and things that are going on in your aquarium, how much stuff's being broken down. Maybe the cycle's not working, maybe not up to the point um, where all the bacteria and everything is able to handle what you're looking for. So, um,. Yeah, I would be higher than 10 parts per million. I shoot for 30 parts per million nitrate, not nitrite. Um, nitrite is garbage. You don't want it in your aquarium. It's bad news. It means something wrong is going on. Um, magic is cheap and it works great. Uh, Fishy Ocean is asking, is it important to have carbon in your filter or is biomedia more important? Uh, biomedia, 100% more important. Biomedia, 100% more important than carbon. Carbon, on that scale, biomedia 100%, carbon 0%. <laughs> if, it's, if it's whichever one is more important, um, it's good to have both. But, um, uh, but I would certainly um, say if it was on the scale of this one or that one, biomedia 100%, carbon not really. Uh, let's see. William McCormick says, I got into Corvus when he stole that light from Corey's shop. I mean, borrowed. Um, yeah, we did, he did. I had a broken light that I fixed. <laughs> and now it's no longer at Kobe's cop shop no more. All right, guys. I um, hope you guys have a fantastic Monday. Hopefully, um, hopefully I'm not totally crazy. Maybe I, I probably confused a bunch of people. Um, but... <clears throat> Uh, yeah. 
Hopefully I explained something. I'm not sure. Uh, either way, I hope you guys have a fantastic night out there. Uh, I'll try to do better tomorrow. We got the real fish talk with Dean and Noodle Legs. So I don't know. But uh, special thanks to all the super chatters. Let me run through those real quickly. Steve Knievel, Oddball Aquatics, Corpse a lot. Twice. Uh, the Zombie Drummer going big time. Laura with an O. Leslie Fish Room. Jeff Rose Fish Keeping. Corpse a lot. And DMC of the Sea. Thanks, guys. I don't know what happened today. Hopefully I didn't freak anybody out and you didn't... Um, Hope I didn't lose y'all. Hopefully I kept it somehow on the tracks. I feel like I went way off the tracks. But, um, yeah. Uh, before everybody leaves today, I would like to remind every single person in the chat right now, that is 170 of you, um, share a video that you like from this channel out into the ether somewhere, whether it's Instagrams, face page, YouTube, uh, community page, whatever it is, pick a video and share it out there for me. Uh, I really appreciate it. If you do, um, the algorithm robot Skynet, whatever you want to call it, they desperately need you to do that. Um, or it will just keep getting mad at us. Um, so please, please, please go out there, find a video of mine that you really like and share it out there. Do me that, do me that solid. It's big time if you do. And thank you very much. Uh, I love you guys and hope to see you in a live stream very soon. Later. Anybody seen that? But. Mm -hmm.